انت سلام مش محترم شو قلنا مش محترم شو قلنا بابنك شو مش محترم انا عايش هذا الخرا كل يوم انا ابني ومرتي واولادي بعيدين عني بس 200 متر ورا هذا الخرا الجدار Concrete and barbed wire are actually what make up this extremely politically charged wall. But the Israeli West Bank barrier is more than just the sum of its parts. Many see it as a symbol of insurmountable divisions between Israelis and Palestinians. For others, it's an arduous part of their daily commute. For director Amin Naife, it's the centre of his latest film, 200 Metres, and he joins us now to discuss this powerful debut feature. I mean, thanks so much for being with us today. Now, the title of your film talks about this literal distance between two main characters, Mustafa and his wife Salwa, who are on opposite sides of that wall. She lives on the Israeli side and he lives on the Palestinian side. Now, I know that you wrote the screenplay for this film, so I wondered if it was inspired by real life events. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Olivia. I actually, yes, this is coming from, unfortunately, from real life events of my personal story and also many stories that I had the chance to know and to meet the people that are living such a difficult situation. As I am from the West Bank, my mother is from a Palestinian village on the Israeli side. And since the wall was built, I could no longer be with my family on the other side. So, and that I was a kid when the wall was being built and uh, suddenly I could not be with my cousins, my aunts, uncles, my grandparents. And of course that uh, resulted in a very difficult memories and uh, trauma, I would say. So, it's so something... yes. So it's something that, that affected you deeply? Yeah, of course, definitely. I still, you know, it is still affecting me until today. Indeed. Well, let's take a look at the film. Here's a clip of 200 meters. Can you talk to you? Yes. Do you want to talk to Yes. What's your age? Are you right? Yes. Why are you right? Yes. Where is mama? No. Okay, let's go. Who is the one? I am. I am. I am. Okay, let's go. Let's go. آه صح دوري يلا جاهزين؟ آه آه يلا واحد اثنين ثلاثة Now what we know geopolitically is that that wall affects the way that people live, work, travel. But in your film, in that clip, we see there a couple, a family, who are directly affected by the wall. And I wondered how you wanted to explore how the uh, family dynamics, how the relationships are modulated by this. Yes, you know, like having having the like uh, to live under such a condition creates the different worlds because we see that they are doing what they can to like Mustafa is doing this uh, night uh, good, good night ritual with his kids to show them that he is there for them and the wife is working day and night to provide for the family but this is also like coming into the relationship between them you know like invisible invisible walls uh, are being built at the same time this is not uh, and then uh, unfortunately Yesterday, you know, the day before yesterday, uh, my film is being screened right now in Ramallah. Uh, so it is like the first time that I am really speaking to Palestinian audience who have watched it. And I was told by one that this is the story of her, uh, of her cousin. Like, like, like copy paste. This is how her cousin is living. Like she is living in Jerusalem and her husband is from a Palestinian uh, city in the West Bank. And they don't know what to do. She, her work is in Jerusalem. Her husband cannot come to live with her, and she's taking care of the kids. And uh, this is the. Uh, it is not a fiction story. Mm. It's, this is real life. It's a common phenomenon. Now we see that for the protagonist Mustafa, who's played by the great Ali Suleiman, uh, getting through the checkpoints every day, as you mentioned, to go to work is a huge uh, challenge. It's not guaranteed. And I wanted to ask you about that very sensitive location, these checkpoints. What was it like to document that? Was it difficult to get permission to film there? Uh, uh, yes, actually, filming in these locations was essential to my film, to, you know, to show the, how the permits work and how the movement is controlled. So yes, we can go to the Israeli side, but with what, what do we have to pay? You know, we have to go in such a de de dehumanizing uh, uh, way, 
you know, like you stand in such a cage like animals uh, and you have to go through three or four inspections, security inspections. And they are just people going to work. They start going at two in the morning just to get a chance to pass and be at their work sites on time. And the way we shot this at these locations, of course, these locations are under the control of the Israeli military. They are like uh, considered as security areas and you cannot get a permit to shoot there. So we were doing like a guerrilla style filming, you know, like just being there in small units and uh, trying to be fast because, uh, you know, this is the only way we can film in these locations. Now, 200 Meters features, to some extent, a film within a film. A visiting German character is making a documentary when she encounters other people in your film, and she finds herself in a dangerous situation because of what she's doing. And it does raise the question, is making art a life or death issue? Is it worth these very high stakes? It is, actually. I mean, like, you can take a look at many journalists who sacrifice their lives and trying to expose... Uh, you know, what is happening in Syria and Libya and Yemen, and Iraq, and Palestine. This is unfortunately, it is a price that people pay, you know, for trying to know what is happening or trying to show the world what is happening. And she came to see for herself what is happening. And she happened to experience, uh, to take a, uh, an experience of the, the real situation. Indeed. Well, tensions in Israel and the Palestinian territories have dominated the headlines in recent months for political and humanitarian reasons. In early May, protests in East Jerusalem over the evictions of families in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood gave way to a violent conflict, including devastating airstrikes on Gaza, with more than 250 Palestinian casualties and 13 people killed in Israel. This latest crisis has had far-reaching effects on people living there. But for those trying to find solace through creative pursuits, Art has occasionally been a way of regaining a sense of normalcy. As an artist, I decided to create a painting during the war, and it was like a psychological release for me, more than it was an artistic expression. The war tired us out. It was exhausting for us, for our children, and for all our friends. Now, Amin, your film was made well before the recent violence in Gaza and the West Bank, so I believe that didn't really affect you directly. But more globally, how does the security situation affect your work, planning shoots, carrying out shoots? Actually, today the situation is uh, maybe in the media is, uh, is it is being shown that it is less uh, like there is less tension than before than in May. But we, as we are living here, we still feel the tension. You know, there are daily daily arrests in the West Bank and uh, in other parts of Palestine, and this is uh, you know, just last night, just uh, the Israeli army or like security secret services they invaded the city of Jenin in the north of the West Bank to arrest uh, a Palestinian man, and they killed three. So, you know, uh, traveling in the West Bank today, now, I, I'm now I'm in the city of Ramallah. If I want to go back to my parents, uh, just 70 kilometers uh, up, up north, I have to go through three checkpoints, three permanent checkpoints. But at these checkpoints, Israeli soldiers are there with their guns. And because of the recent situation, they are actually point, pointing their guns at the passing cars, and you are just afraid to sneeze. You are just afraid that, uh, you know, you might do anything uh, that, you know, uh, actually also, I heard this story yesterday. Uh, a journalist was driving by, by a checkpoint, and he was playing music. He could not hear the soldiers, you know, shouting for him. You know, it was like a fraction of a second. If he did not really pay attention to them, he could have been shot. And this is, this is, uh, you know, this is how, it is now. Hmm. Now, coming back to day-to-day -day life and working in the arts, in the industry, for those who, like yourself, decide to pursue a career in cinema specifically, what are the options when it comes to training and gaining qualifications in the Palestinian territories? What sort of structures are there to enter the arts? Uh, today we have a film school that is uh, really doing a great job in the city of Bethlehem. And uh, beside that, uh, I think like most of the like projects and films are maybe done with like individual, uh, you know, 
as uh, individual projects. We do not have like a real structure that is supporting uh, cinema industry uh, in Palestine because uh, uh, unfortunately it's not on the priorities of anyone. And that's very sad, you know, for me to make my film, it took me eight years since I wrote the first draft. And that's because, you know, uh, it is very costly to produce a feature film. And we had to look for the money outside uh, Palestine and even outside the Arab world. It really shows the determination of those Palestinian artists who get their work shown in the end. Now, finally, we asked you to point us in the direction of something artistic you've enjoyed lately. And you named the singer Maryam Abulwafa. She's Moroccan. Can you tell us what it is about her music that stopped you in your tracks? It is, uh, I don't know, of course, her voice is, um, is very special and it's very uh, warm. And uh, when I discovered her, her album, uh, she, she, it felt very genuine, you know, it felt very true. And uh, I don't know, like the lyrics and the way she, uh, she like speaks her art uh, touched me really deeply. And that's the song that I would like if you can play. It's called Deeply and it's a, it's a very special one. We will do just that. I mean, thank you so much for the tip and thank you for your time today. We'll leave you with that track, Deeply, by Miriam Abulwafa. Do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture. We're on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. I don't like when you judge. I don't like, I don't like, isn't it a Scarce resources, little to no recognition, and a succession of natural disasters have driven many of Puerto Rico citizens to the breaking point. Pero el resto de la familia, incluyendo mis hijos, está fuera de Puerto Rico, están en Estados Unidos. Estoy recibiendo algunos 961, creo que es que me sobra. While Joe Biden's presidential win has given some people hope. Y para mí eh, es mucho mejor eh, el que tengamos todos los derechos que tienen los ciudadanos americanos. Others remain skeptical about the country's future. O debemos independizarnos. Puerto Rico, treading waters, on France 24 and France24.com.